Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the FT Easy Dragon from our FT Easy Fantasy Pack. Now the FT Easy Fantasy Pack is designed by our good friends, Natalie and Ben Harbour. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to build, how to tune, and also how to fly this awesome little design. Now if you're ready to build along with me, let's get our materials in order and we'll get started. So the first step in our build for FT Easy Dragon is to pop out all the pieces. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So now with all the pieces popped out, let's go ahead and identify them. First, we have our main body, our main body doublers, our main wing, our elevator, and the rear support for our fuselage. Up front here, we also have our dihedral gauge, which is really important. Let's go ahead and put our pieces aside here, all except the dihedral gauge and our wing, and we'll start assembly. Now, a lot of times you'll see airplanes with basically dihedral, which is a bend right in the middle. This plane's actually going to have polydihedral or polyhedral and that's going to be where it has multiple bends. To get the right amount of bend here, we're first going to go ahead and establish the right amount of dihedral, and then we'll go back and we'll do the polyhedral on the end. The groove on the top with the biggest notch is going to be the groove that we're going to put on the very tip of the wing to get the proper amount of dihedral in. We're going to open this up, put a healthy bead of glue right down the middle, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge, and we're going to press the one side of the wing down flat up against the table. Now you want to make sure that this is easily lifted above here, and it's not pushing against the table where when you pull the dihedral gauge out, it goes back down. Let this fully dry for at least a minute, and then we'll move on to the next step. After about a minute, you should be able to pull this out and not to see the wing drop at all. Now to get our polyhedra on both sides of the wing tips, we're gonna use the lower notch here, and we're gonna put it in the same spot we had before. And this time, we're gonna make sure that we can press the one side of the wing up firmly against the table, just like you see here. Once we know that we can lift this and this isn't forcing down too hard, we can open this up. Again, I'm going to put a healthy bead of glue right down on here. If any glue squeezes out the top, don't worry. We can easily squeegee it off with a piece of scrap foam right here. And we're going to, again, let this dry for about a minute. And finally, the same process on the other side. We'll put our dihedral gauge on the furthest tip out. I like to always kind of bend it up a little bit to make sure it's not pushing too hard. any excess we have on there and we'll let it dry for a minute and you can see that our polydihedral is all done this is the exact angles you want to have an incredible flight experience the way polydihedral works is basically this curve in the wing not only gives it stability but also when one wing is lower than the other side this wing generates more lift and brings it back to level let's go ahead and put this aside and we'll put our attention towards the main fuselage now with our main fuselage you're going to see that we have two doublers on those doublers, we have etching that gives the dragon its face. We want to make sure that we don't glue this in backwards, or else you're going to basically be covering up its face. We always like to start with a test fit, and in this case, we're going to make sure that our battery slot and our pass-through hole line up perfectly. And we're also going to take note on the areas that we want to put glue, and also the areas that we don't want to. You can see that there's portions of this that are going to protrude out and above the center piece of the... You're going to see that there's portions of this that basically glue is not going to help you. So once we've done our test fit, we have a good idea where we want to put our glue and where we don't want to. I'm going to come down, put a thin ribbon of glue. Again, you don't need a lot of glue, just enough to hold it down. We're going to line it up once more and press it in place. Once we got the one side done, we'll do the exact same process on the other side. Okay, same process on the other side here. Again, we're going to line up the battery slot, our pass-through hole, our mouth, the lower chin, and we're going to take note on where everything is. Go ahead and place that down, line it up one more time, and we'll press it in place until it dries. Now that we have the main section of our fuselage done, let's go ahead and install our wing. Our wing is going to line up right on the top of the back of the dragon, right in the middle here, and you're going to notice it's going to start and stop right where the legs are. The important thing that we want to make sure is when we look down on the fuselage, the fuselage is vertical, and the wings line up equally on both sides. Does that look pretty even? Once we're happy with that, I'm going to place a healthy bead of glue right down the middle. I'm going to place my wing in. Again, we're 
just take a note right where the two doublers end and the top of the neck starts going up. And with just a little bit of downward pressure, I'm going to hold this in place. I'm going to make sure it's nice and even and we'll let it dry. Now once this is dry, to give us a little bit more strength, especially with the kind of flying we're going to be doing with it, I'm going to do a thin bead of glue on both sides. Again, anytime I put glue down, I'm just going to make sure everything's nice and even. And we're going to hold it there for about a minute. So we may have lift, but we don't have stability. To give it the right amount of stability, we're going to install our stabilizer or our rear tail. You're going to notice that there's two edge lines going through our elevator, and that's going to be to help us align up the center with our fuselage. So let's go ahead and pass that on through. And we're just going to make sure that the tail is nice and perpendicular to the fuselage. Once we're happy with the alignment, we're just going to lock it down with some glue, and we have our tail on. Now our final step here is going to be the back of the dragon. This not only gives it a really cool look, but it also adds a little bit of stiffness on the back. So as you fly this and crash this, it doesn't bend. This back is going to simply push down, nest right up against the rear legs, and also grip around the rear tail of the dragon. We always want to kind of give it a test fit to make sure that we have the, the memory that we need to be able to glue it down. And once we're happy with that, I'm first going to place a bead of glue right down on the rear spine here. Push this over. And then finally, to give a little bit of support up towards the doublers, just like on the wing, I'm going to put a bead of glue on both sides. Our Dragon airframe is now complete. Our next step is to install our electronics. Let's go ahead and locate our motor, our props, and our control board, and we'll prepare them and get them ready. So located here, we have the contents that are going to go on our airplane. We have our right and our left motor. We also have our two props. Now these props are both different here. And because this is a tractor stop configuration, the plane's going to be getting pulled through the air. For that reason, we want to be very careful on how we install our props to make sure that we have the right one on the right side. We're going to go ahead and first take our blue motor, and we're going to locate the prop that has a little marking that has the letter B on it. You're also going to notice with this prop that we have a rounded edge and a flat edge. For this application, we want to make sure that the rounded edge is pointing towards the motor. And to put this prop on this motor, we don't want to push it in midair because we can damage the motor by pushing the back cap out. All we simply need to do is lay the back end of the motor cap right up against the table. We're going to find the hole of the curved edge, and with a, just a gentle pressure downwards, we're going to press it into place. You don't want to try to push your prop on because you have a good chance of bending the prop shaft and also damaging your motor. Now that we have the B prop on the blue motors, let's go ahead and take the A prop with the rounded edge pointing towards the motor and install it into our red motor. Again, we're just going to take the can right down to the table. We're going to have a rounded portion of the prop facing towards the motor. It's going to line up with the hole. Steady push down is all you need. At this point, we're ready to install the motors on our airplane. Now, I'm going to go ahead and position the Dragon basically in the orientation that you want to have it on the workbench. If you were flying on top of this Dragon, this would be your right side, and this would be your left side. We're going to locate our right motor and put it on the right side. And we're going to locate our left motor, in this case it's the red one, and put it on our left side. Now we can go ahead and grab our right motor, our right side, and we can glue our motor in. If you put these motors in backwards and then plug them in the proper orientation on the control board, your plane simply won't fly. It will spiral out of control. We're going to place two beads of glue on both sides of the motor. And then we'll press this flat up against the leading edge and against the bottom of the wing. Now would be a really good time also. I'm just going to push this little tag back a little bit, pass your motor wire through the actual fuselage, and over to the other side. Same process on the other side here. We're going to just do a quick test fit. And once we're happy with the test fit, we're going to glue it down. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to make sure everything on your Dragon looks just like mine. You're going to want to make sure that the round portions of the props are facing towards the motor. You're going to want to make sure that your blue motor is on the right side, your red motor is on the left side. Our next step is to install the flight control board. You're going to see two laser etch marks here that are going to line up 
right with your control board and give you the proper orientation. Now you can zip tie the flight control board down if you'd like, but I prefer just to use a couple drops of glue. It's very important that we always put our flight control board down where the antenna is pointing downwards and the battery lead is pointing towards the nose. Now that we have our flight control board in, we're going to go ahead and make our connections. You're going to notice that we have a red lead and a white lead and that corresponds with the red and white connectors on the flight control board. You're going to want to make sure that when you plug this in that you don't force it in backwards and that it should easily just clip in with a gentle push. You're going to notice that there's two white connectors up on the top here. These are for optional lights. Now if you bought our FTEZ Fantasy Pack starter bundle, these lights are actually included and you can basically just plug these in and route the lights any way you want to give the whole dragon proper illumination. At this point, we're ready to go out to the field and put this up for its very first flight. All right, the FTEZ Dragon is now ready for its very first flight. We have a little bit of wind and you always wanna make sure that you always launch and land your airplane into the wind. Now, before launching, we do wanna make sure that we bound up. We also wanna make sure that we're in high rates. So we're gonna press the right button one time. We wanna see that flashing LED on there. Now, the easiest way to launch this is just by the bottom of the belly. We'll throw this into the wind. Let's see how it flies. Now this plane's a little bit more like a motor glider. In other words, as you fly it, you're gonna notice that it soars a little bit different than the Pegasus or even the, uh, the Phoenix. This is because it has a conventional tail. If you want a little bit more speed, you can increase the nose rate. This right now is right in the middle, so it's flying nice and slow, but a little bit nose high. If I wanna be able to go a little bit faster, I can move that nose weight forward and that will give it the ability to fly a little bit faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and throttle back to about 10, 15%, throttle back, and there we go. Friends, I wanna thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for taking the time to build and fly with us. And we wanna give a big shout out to our good friends, Natalie and Ben Harbor for these amazing designs. Check out the skins that our good friend, Ron Smith has made that you can download and print and put on these. They add an amazing scale detail. Can't wait to build with you again. We'll see you next time.